Welcome to Culture Alley Mandarin. Ni hao. This is Basic Mandarin Lesson 22. Today, we will learn about describing people using different adjectives. Let's start by going over some of the phrases that you learned in the last lesson. Hobbies translates as ai hao, while like becomes xi huan. To draw becomes hua hua. And lastly, usually translates as ping shi. Excellent! Next, we will review a few phrases we learned earlier. What are your hobbies translates as ni yo shema ai hao. While I like drawing becomes wo xi huan hua hua. Wonderful will be tai hao le. And what do you usually like to do is translated as ni ping shi xi huan zuo shema. Great. Now let's take a look at some more words we learned previously. Shopping translates to guang jie, while to watch becomes kan. Movie translates as dian ing, while swimming becomes yo yong. Similarly, sports translates to yun dong. And to play or playing is translated as da. Finally, a trip translates to lü. Good. Let's look at a few more sentences. I like shopping translates to wo xi huan guang jie. While I don't like watching TV becomes 我不喜欢看电视. Similarly, I like watching movies becomes 我喜欢看电影. And I like swimming is translated as 我喜欢游泳. The sentence, I don't like swimming, I like sports, translates as, 我不喜欢游泳, 我喜欢运动. And, I also like playing basketball, will be, 我也喜欢打篮球. Finally, I also like to travel becomes 我也喜欢旅游. Very good. Let's quickly review the conversation between Mark and Lisa. As always, first in English, followed by Mandarin. Hello, how are you? I am good. How are you? I am also good. What are your hobbies? I like drawing. Wonderful. What do you usually like to do? I like swimming. I don't like swimming. I like sports. I also like playing basketball. I also like to travel. Now let's hear it in Mandarin. Ni hao. Ni hao ma. Wo han hao. Ni na. 我也很好。你有什么爱好? 我喜欢画画。太好了。你平时喜欢做什么? 我喜欢游泳。我不喜欢游泳。我喜欢运动。我也喜欢打篮球。我也喜欢旅游。
Great. Now let's move on to today's lesson. Today, we shall describe people using multiple adjectives. We will end by describing two different people. So let's take a look. In the first case, we will describe a man named Tom. Here's how we'll describe him. He is Tom. He is an old man. He is kind and patient. He is tall and has white hair. In the second case, we will describe a girl called Susan. Here we go. She is Susan. She is Chinese. She loves to study. She is intelligent. Let's start by learning some of the vocabulary involved in describing Tom. Let's start with, he is Tom. Here's the word-by-word -word translation of this sentence. He translates to, ta, is becomes, shi. And Tom translates as, tang mu. Tang mu is said with a high level tone on A and a mid rising tone on U. Great! Now let's take a look at the second sentence. He is an old man, literally translates as he old very in Mandarin. To translate this, we first need to look at the particle la. Here's a quick grammar tip for you. La can imply a lot of things in Mandarin. It is most commonly used to express the completion of an action. That is to say that it has already been done. However, it is also used to show an excessive emotion, either happy or sad, and is used in the following sentence to mean very. La either comes directly after a verb or at the end of the sentence. Great! Now let's look at the word-by-word -word translation for this sentence. He translates to ta. Old becomes lao. And very translates as la. An important point to note here is that the to be verb is not translated with adjectives in Mandarin. Thus, the sentence literally translates as he old very. Thus, he is an old man translates to Ta lao le, literally implying he old very. Note how le comes at the end of the sentence. Great! Now let's look at the vocabulary required to say he is tall and has white hair. Let's begin with tall. Tall becomes gao and carries a high level tone like Gao. Good. Hair translates as tofa and carries a mid rising tone on o, making it tofa. Great. Now let's learn to say white. White translates as bai, which is pronounced with a mid rising tone. Good. Here's something you need to remember. In Mandarin, we cannot use the to be verb with adjectives. Thus, to replace it, we use the word hun, meaning very. So, he is tall literally translates as he very tall in Mandarin. Let's look at the breakup of this sentence. He becomes ta while very translates as hun and tall becomes gao. Thus, he is tall becomes ta hun gao. In Mandarin, he has white hair literally translates as he has hair white very, where very is denoted by the particle la and has by the possessive particle da. Breaking it down word by word, he translates to ta, while has becomes da. Hair translates as tofa. White becomes bai. 
And finally, very translates as la. Recall that de is a possessive particle that makes he into his. Thus, he has white hair translates as ta de tofa bai le. Very good. Let's see the next sentence. He is kind and patient translates as he is kind, moreover, has patience. We use moreover as and is not used as a linking word for adjectives in Mandarin. Let's learn the vocabulary required to say this sentence. Kind becomes 慈祥, which uses a mid-rising tone on both I and A, making it 慈祥. Good! Moreover translates as 而且 which is spoken using a mid-rising tone on the first E and a falling rising tone on the second. Thus it becomes Archie. Great! Patience or patient translates as Nai Xin, which uses a falling tone on A and a high level tone on I, making it Nai Xin. Wonderful! Now let's take a look at the breakup of the sentence. He becomes ta, while is translates as shi. Kind is si xiang, and moreover translates as er qie. Has from the verb to have translates as yo. And finally, patience becomes Nai Xin. Therefore, he is kind and patient becomes Ta Tsi Xiang, Er Chie Yo Nai Xin. Literally meaning, he is kind and has patience. All right, let's see if you remember what we've learned till now. How do we say tall in Mandarin? Do we say gao or lao or is it bai? Tall translates to gao in Mandarin. Here's another one. What does ci xiang mean in Mandarin? Does it mean kind or patient? Or does it mean white? Ci xiang literally means kind in Mandarin. Hope you got that one right. How do we say patient in Mandarin? Do we say nai xin or er qie? Or do we say tou fa? Patient is said as Nai Xin in Mandarin. Here's the last one. How do we say he has white hair in Mandarin? Do we say it as Ta de Tofa Bai Le? Or does it become Ta de Tofa Le Bai? Or is it simply Ta le Tofa Bai De? He has white hair translates as Ta de Tofa Bai Le. Hope you got that one right. Great! Let's review what we've covered about Tom. He is Tom becomes Ta Shi Tang Mu. While he is an old man becomes Ta Lao Le. He is tall translates as Ta hen gao. Similarly, he has white hair becomes Ta de tofa bai le. And finally, he is kind and patient is translated as Ta ci xiang, er qie yu nai xin. Excellent! 
Now let's move on to the next case, Susan. Susan is studious and intelligent. Let's learn to describe her. The first sentence is simple. She is Susan. She is Susan translates as Ta shi su shan where su shan is pronounced with two high-level tones, one on u and the other on a. Good! Let's break up the next sentence, which is she is Chinese. She translates as ta is becomes shi, while Chinese becomes zhong guo. Finally, person translates as ren. Thus, she is Chinese becomes ta shi zhong guo ren. Literally, she is Chinese person. Great! The next sentence we will cover is, she loves to study. Let's look at the vocabulary for the same, starting with to love. To love or love translates as I, which is pronounced using a falling tone, like I. Good! To learn or to study becomes Xi, where Xi is pronounced with a mid-rising tone on both E and I. Let's now break up the sentence, she loves to study. She translates to ta, while loves becomes I. And study translates as xue xi, literally translating as she loves study. Thus, she loves to study becomes ta ai xue xi. Great! Let's look at the vocabulary required for the next sentence. Intelligent or smart translates as tong ming, which is pronounced with a high level tone on o and a mid rising tone on i, becoming tong ming. Here's a quick grammar tip for you. Unlike English, the to be verb shi, that is am, is, are, in Chinese is not used with adjectives good, bad, etc. Thus, we commonly use the word hen instead of the to be verb shi. Let's break down she is very intelligent. She becomes ta. Very translates as hen. And intelligent becomes tong ming. Note that the to be verb is not translated here as we are using the adjective intelligent. Thus, she is very intelligent becomes ta hen tong ming. Great! All right, let's quickly review all that we've covered till now. She is Susan translates as ta shi su shan. And she is Chinese becomes ta shi zhong guo ren. She loves to study will be ta ai xue xi. While she is intelligent translates to ta hen tong ming. Great! Let's have a quick quiz to see if you remember what we've covered. How do we say to love in Mandarin? Is it I or hen? Or does it become xue xi? To love translates as I in Mandarin. Hope you ace that one. How do we say intelligent in Mandarin? Do we say Tong Ming or Dian? Or do we say Ren instead? In Mandarin, intelligent literally translates as Tong Ming. Here's another one. 
How do we say she is intelligent in Mandarin? Do we say ta shi hen cong ming? Or is it ta shi cong ming? Or does it become ta hen cong ming? The correct answer to the previous question is ta hen cong ming. That's all for the day. Let's take a look at the vocabulary we've learned so far. Tom translates as tang mu, while old becomes lao. Very or excess becomes le, while tall translates as gao. Similarly, hair becomes tou fa. And white is by, while kind is si xiang, and moreover translates as er qie. Finally, patient translates as nai xin. Excellent. Here are some more words we learned today. Susan will be su shan. While Chinese becomes Zhong Guo, love translates as I. And finally, study becomes Xue Xi. Good. All right, it's time for the culture leaf of the day. The Forbidden City was the Chinese imperial palace from the Ming Dynasty to the end of the Qing Dynasty. It is located in the middle of Beijing, China, and now houses the Palace Museum. The common English name, the Forbidden City, or Zijincheng, referred to the fact that no one could enter or leave the palace without the emperor's permission. Zhu Di. A Yongle emperor began the construction of the Forbidden City that lasted more than 14 years and employed more than a million workers. Material used include whole logs of precious VB Jinnan wood found in the jungles of southwestern China and large blocks of marble from quarries near Beijing. The Forbidden City was designed to be the center of the ancient walled city of Beijing. It is enclosed in a larger, walled area called the Imperial City. The Imperial City is, in turn, enclosed by the Inner City. To its south lays the Outer City. The image here is of the Forbidden City viewed from the Jingshan Hill to the north. In the next lesson, we shall discuss more on describing people, where we will cover two more characters to learn about adjectives in detail. Hope you enjoyed your lesson today. See you at the alley for the next one.